the hoop shark, man. I'm gonna add you to the to the crew, man. This crew called Hoop Shark, and they've been they've been getting at it, man. They go they the ones that's gonna grill you, man, because they they majority are all Houston people. So that's that's shout out to Hoop Shark. Shout out to Hoop Shark. Shout out to Hoop Jordan, man. Shout out to uh, the late, no, not the late. I say that. I always do that. The great Kendrick Perkins, man. He um, give a shout out to the channel. So that's always a good thing, man. I'm giving y'all double duty today, man. So I'm coming out with a special guest, man. It, it's going to be a good show, man. We got to talk pre-show a little bit. Definitely a down-to-earth brother. Um, and y'all, before we do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Y'all get active in this um, comment thread. Y'all asking questions. That's why he's here. Um, and he's ready to do that, man. Shout out to Early Birds, man. Christian G in the building. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Vigo hoop jogging. Without further ado, man, let's go and bring him up, man. Marcus Fies, what's going on, man? How's it going, brother? It's going good, man. Going good, man. So, um, you know, we we talked a little uh, backstage, man. How, how's life for you, man? Talk talk to the people, man. My life is good, you know. Just trying to navigate this craziness that we're going through. Um, you know, just pandemic and all. Just trying to keep. The family and the kids safe and you know just one day at a time hoping for better days ahead there you go and that's all you can do as a father man we talking a little pre-show about about your boy out there in fresno um you know he, he's made a name for himself man how does that make you feel being a father having your kid follow your footsteps and hooping uh, it feels really good you know he put in a lot of hard work um you know looking to to get into the pro scene you know sooner than later but he still got a lot of work to do but uh to be able to, uh, you know, make him the man that he is or help him to become the man that he's become, the young man that he has become, um, you know, is a great honor. And uh, I look forward to the things that he's, he's going to achieve in the uh, years ahead. There you go, man. I, I appreciate uh, fathers out there, you know, pushing the, their boys through, man, because you know how the, the stigma goes in our community that right. uh, fathers are not active in that capacity. Um, and looking at you, looking at Cadillac Naval Ball, man, it's, it's a lot of active dads out there getting their kids to learn the craft and, and take it to where they take it. So that's always a good thing. Now, I got to say this, man. You um, you was one of my favorite players on NBA 2K back in the day, man. You was Appreciate built it. like a house, and you can buy six of it, can do it all, man. So this is like one of my my, my childhood um, uh, completions, you know what I mean, as far as getting to talk to Marcus Pfizer, man. So come out of Iowa State. Man, explain. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the Bulls currently, but let's let's talk about um you know what before we even go there, I gotta say Marcus Files is a part of our hoop jargon crew, um on Facebook, and so I, I've noticed you've been yes, commenting on posts over the last year, so that's why I wanted to have you in. So I want to salute you for being a part of our, our Facebook movement as well, man. Yes, that's for sure. For sure. I mean, I just you know, I'm a regular guy. You know, a lot of people think that um you know you have some success in basketball or anything in life, you, you should change and, and things about life change, but ain't, ain't nothing changed with me. You know, I, I go into social media like anybody else. I, I'm a regular guy like anybody else. I got regular bills and kids driving me crazy like anybody else. So, <laughs> you know, the, the, the normal things in life I try to uh, participate in and, you know, let people understand that, you know, uh, not everybody is like that. Um, you know, you, you have some some people out here that are regular people, and I'm definitely one of them. And it is, man. And I like to stress to people a lot, man. People ask me all the time, have you played against NBA players? I'm like, yeah, I played against several. And to be honest, we all, the culture is the same. We all human beings. Some of them are the select, right. some not the select, but we all the same. Right. At the end of the day, right. when you meet anybody right. of any prominence, I mean, I'm not going to be on here name dropping, but I've hung out with these people at like clubs. Everybody, we we all are people trying to achieve the same goal. Some got more O's in their bank account than others. That, that's pretty much what separates most from, from the others. So I appreciate you, man. Like right, you, right. you're very much welcome on this show. Whenever. So let's get into it, man. Oh, so uh, I'm gonna oh, go ahead. You got some some business. You need no, to no, no. To. I'm just going in the house. No, I'm going in the house because I guess the, the Wi-Fi is too far away and it's it's breaking up a little bit. So okay, just want to make sure <laughs> I have no connection issues with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, appreciate that. Give me the optimum. Uh, like he's going through a yeah. hundred house, though. Lights in there somewhere. There we go. But yeah, so while, while uh, Marcus is getting that together, man, um, 
But one thing I will say is we want to talk about the Kawhi Leonard uh, injury situation. As we know, it's been going on pretty long. I actually went last night to the Clippers game, and shout out to the Clippers, pulled out a very good win on the Heat. And I got to give Kyle Lowry a lot of kudos, too. I didn't know he had him. That ball was cooking late in that game. And um, so I'm a yeah, Lakers fan, can, but he can get it going. Oh, he can get it going, man. I told people yeah. when he played for the Rockets, I was like, Kyle Lowry, he was like third string point guard at one point. I was like, dog, that dude needs to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people don't remember that. Oh, people I remember, remember that. When Kyle was down in Houston. With Aaron Brooks and then uh, right. uh, Dragic was ahead of him. I was like, yo, mm-hmm. Lowry need to be starting. <laughs> That's just facts. Aaron so, yeah, man, so let's either. talk a little bit. Go, go ahead, go ahead. For sure. Yeah, Aaron wasn't bad either. Uh, yeah, yeah, they had some 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 young some young guys down there, some young players that down there at the time. And yeah, a lot of people don't remember that young Kyle Lowry. Uh, we watched him pretty much come up, and you know he's had a lot of success. Yeah, and I, I guess I take pride in seeing his his uh, progression from from start to finish. And I kind of I kind of have a thing where I like to I really appreciate a, a point guard like a real point guard. And I actually want you mm-hmm. to talk about this because this is something that gets. Right caught in these spaces like what's the difference between a point guard who gives you the ball like in your scoring pocket or when you're comfortable and a point guard who more or less is ball dominant and they give it to you when they're in trouble like so you tell me as a as a swing player how how did that affect your game i mean usually uh, you know my i guess you say my success came because i don't ever want to be one on on the you know stardom crap uh but my success came at iowa state once i got you know, Jamal Tinsley, <clears throat> and no knock against Tinsley. the point guards that we had before then, and absolutely shout to JT. Um, but he was just a, a point guard that, you know, if you didn't have your hands ready, he's going to hit you in the face with the ball and then apologize. You know, it was going to be where it needed to be. So for me, like, you know, get the rebound, whoever get the rebound, and just go and just knowing that that ball was going to be there when it's supposed to be, when it needed to be, that Rondo-type point guard. And, you yeah, know, absolutely. as a score. You know, you love that. You know, you you're not you're not going to be there. You you're not playing with the guy that's trying to get it in the position of the stats and things like that. Um, we've seen a lot of guards that be those type of guards, and you know they have success and everything like that. But give me a point guard that's that pass first point guard that loves to have more assist than, than points and uh, things like that. So it definitely, uh, you know, the the pass first point guard is is definitely those the kind I love playing with. <clears throat> And you know what's what the what the honest truth is? I don't care. Now a lot of players won't break down and and be as candid, you know, as, as I'm about to be. But a good point guard will make you look better than what you look. As Sean Absolutely. Marion. As um, you know, <laughs> we saw when Sean Marion went to when he, he left and went to the Miami Heat and went to Toronto, he didn't look as good as Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And then when he came to Dallas, it, it, he looked good again. I'm telling you, man, mm-hmm. some dudes. We, I was like that. I needed my point guard to basically spoon feed me. I was a finish. I'm six foot seven, athletic. Mm-hmm. So I, I needed somebody to give it to me in my pocket. I'm going to catch that and bang on somebody. Exactly. So, yeah. So you, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I, I mean, uh, you know, a true hooper will say that and, and won't be offended by it. You know, um, we, we, we see the success that Kenny Martin had, Kenny Martin Sr. Oh. had for, for the longest. Absolutely. But you mean tell me if he didn't want to be with Jason Kidd? You know, the whole time, I mean, to have that kind of point guard, come on now. You know, it's clearly to have that type of point guard will, will definitely make you and your game uh, and your skills better. And, uh, hey, I'm not going to complain about it at all. And I, you know what? I, I think that's going to be a good segue to where we about to go. And I'm going to go straight to this mm-hmm. point. We're talking about Kawhi on the back end. Um, okay. Shout out to uh, Unvern the Bill to hit that like, subscribe. But, yeah, hit that like, subscribe. And listen to Unvern, man. That's the OG right there, man. So, Fazer, man, how, how you feel what's going on with the Bulls right now? I know that's, you know, the team that drafted you. You spent, you spent the most time with, um, you know, and the point guard who comes to mind, obviously, is Lonzo Ball. How, how do yeah. you feel he's been a catalyst to their success being tied for the top uh, at the East right now? Well, those guys are hungry. You know, without a doubt, they're hungry. Um, you know, they, him and uh, DeRozan and, you know, Zach, for, for any rate, and including um, uh, Caruso, those guys feel like the, the, the last couple of places they've been, they hadn't really gotten the attention or, you know, the starting that they felt they ultimately uh, should have been getting. And, you know, now you put them together in the nucleus where, you know, it's, it's a rebuilding point. Um, and, and they're having fun. I mean, it is early, so we would definitely love to see it continue on more as the season uh, progresses on. But, 
and they're having fun and they're, they're definitely stirring up the ease, um, kicking up a lot of noise. You know, they're, they're looking to do something uh, that hasn't been done around there in a long time. I got to agree, man, because we know there's been very, you know, the, the ghost of Michael Jordan hangs over United Center. We, we all know that. You know it better than anybody. We got, the, we got the fresh, we got the fresh ghost. The fresh <laughs> ghost. I mean, you can still, <laughs> it wasn't just the ghost. You can still hear the footsteps. Around <laughs> yeah. around. So, that was tough, man. That was, I mean, people don't understand how tough that was. And then, like, my years there is when he, when he was, was coming back to play with the Wizards. And so, you know, him still playing. And then that first game when he came back to Chicago, man, I was like, like, this is surreal, absolutely, to be on the court with him. He yeah. definitely would have loved to have played, you know, on the same team with him during those championship years. Maybe I have a different ring than just my wedding ring. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's just to, to be, and not necessarily in that shadow, but it was so fresh, you know, to win those championships, that many championships, and have that kind of stardom. And then you know to to go into that rebuilding stage, it was it was real tough to do. And and we were we were young, we were you know dumb, uh, running around Chicago, instant millionaires out of the blue, and everybody just trying to carve their own niche and, and doing something that you know we've never done. And you know we lost a whole lot of games because of it. Yeah, because because um, you are one of two iterations of the quote unquote baby bull era. Y'all was number one with you, Tyson, Eddie Curry. Uh, I think Heinrich was in that. In that, well, Heinrich was a little before that, but still in that. No, no, no he a little was, after. No. He was a little after. I'm sorry. No, he, he was. He was the next year. Yeah, yeah. Like y'all had guys who around my age when I played college ball, and so I I, I was really keyed into what y'all had going. Because at, at the time, if y'all remember, uh, Tyson Chandler was supposed to have been um, Kevin Kevin Garnett 2.0. As we know, he become a rim runner, but that's not what his original uh, coming out of Dominguez out here in LA. That wasn't his first his first mold. So basically, y'all had these parts that everybody didn't know exactly what to do. And would you say that kind of right. attributed to, you know, plus Absolutely. the you know being young and dumb? Do you think that kind of was why y'all couldn't really find an identity? Absolutely. I, I mean, I got drafted with I think six or seven rookies. Uh, Elton Brand, Corey Benjamin um, were two rookies that was and Ron Artest. Uh, was right, drafted right. the year before, you know. So we were young. I think the, the oldest guy on the team at the time was Fred Hoiberg, and he was 26, 27. You know, so you you dealing with a lot of twenty year old, twenty one year olds. I was twenty one at the time, and then we had Eddie and Tyson that came the next year. That was eighteen and nineteen years old. Jamal Crawford, you know, Jamal was young. God, he was on that team. All were extremely. We all were extremely young, man. Khalid Alamine, Jake Vosco. I mean, we were just young, just Jake doing whatever. Just doing whatever and, and and trying to, you know, learn how to win, uh, which obviously a, not, a lot of those didn't come. But, you know, being in that space of not having a lot of key veterans, you need a lot of key veterans to, you know, mold you and, and show you the proper way to go. And we just unfortunately didn't have that at the time. Yeah, and I, I, I that's definitely what, what played out. And I got to ask, man, like, how did it feel to kind of, again, live in Jordan's shadow at the house that Jordan built? Like in losing, like how, how did that feel? Like coming from being a prominent athlete, uh, it, 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 I mean, it was terrible. I mean, the, the the fan base was definitely there behind us. You know, um, we still had sellout games and stuff like that. <laughs> you can call it a, a live or a carryover, but you know they were intrigued to see you know what the next steps would have could have been, would have been. Um, but I mean, it's. It's, it's hard and slow getting out of the gate coming behind a total rebuild like that. I mean, not yeah. only, you know, with Scotty gone and MJ and the rest of that team, pretty much all that team, you know, Phil Jackson was gone too and that whole coaching staff. So then we had a young group of, of a nucleus of players that you tried to teach the triangle to that, you know, it took the champions years and years to master. Yeah. You know, everybody didn't want to run that. Um you know, there was rebellion left and right about whatever that was going on. Again, we were young. So in the center of Chicago, you know, you're in practice. The only thing you're thinking about is, you know, what chick going to see you in this car that they got to see you <laughs> in pull up to play. I mean, it, that's that's real. You know, when hey, people don't think about that, that's, that's facts. the realness. You know what I mean? You call into the club to make sure ain't nobody, you know, parked in front of the club because – you know, we're going to get that 1230 and you're on up at 11. You know, you want your car in the front. 
you want to be seen, you know, giving the, the valet guy $100 for letting it stand in front. That type of stuff go on, man. And when people don't think they go on, like, that's when, you know, things go by the wayside. But um, it was it, it was a lot of learning that we had to do. And, you know, ultimately, we took a lot of lumps forward. And, um, you know, that time was over. And, you know, <laughs> now they're doing a lot better. You know what? And again, I, I like the backstories because a lot of people don't understand mm -hmm. <clears throat> what all comes into a losing product. It's not necessarily like we let in about a point guard getting you the ball right. It's about the culture. I can yeah. recall, man, my, my junior year was my first year at Prairie View and and we, we won two games in conference. And it wasn't because Ooh. we were trash. It yeah. was because we had a lot of stuff. I mean, because my coach played at Arkansas. He played for um, uh, Nolan Richardson. His name oh, is Daryl Hawkins. Nolan. Yeah, <clears throat> I think. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I know Derek. Yeah, so, so Nolan came and ran some of our practices. Like, so we knew what to do. Like, we started the year off. We played. Uh, I mean, again, a smaller HBCU. We played Louisville. We played them tough. We lost by like twenty. It, it was. I mean, in 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 low major basketball world, that, that, that's low key a win. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I, I was I was watching I was watching the other day when um who Gonzaga was playing the other night, uh Dixie Ooh. State. Yeah. When they beat Dixie State and like Dixie State ended up losing like by twenty something, but I'm like, man, I expected that to be a forty piece. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> like yeah. to them going back to their little small school, you know. And I know Dixie State really well, as I don't have. I live in Vegas. I don't have up from here. And uh, uh, my cousin, my first cousin, she played there the last two years. Um, her her college in basketball. She graduated in uh, this past May, so I know the school. We, we go up there all the time, like an hour, an hour and a half away. So I know how small of a school it is. And to be able to play a team like Gonzaga and like, man, we only lost by like 20-something. We thought we were going to lose by like 50. Yeah. You know, like you said, that's a win. It, it is. Because because those are games. So for mm -hmm. y'all who don't know why you see small schools take those games, they're called guaranteed games. Like they'll pay you a couple hundred thousand dollars to take that game. So on the high end, low end, you get 80K, depending on how far you travel. Right. So that's a – you know, and it's it's like the Robin Peter to pay Paul. That is what basically funds your program taking these big games right. that you are gonna lose. Now, sometimes yeah. you may mess around and sneak one, and then you you didn't got out yeah. like a thief in the night. I'll give an example. My mm -hmm. first school I played at, Stephen F. Austin beat Duke two years ago at Duke. And the buddy got the runaway layup to win it. He's from the Bahamas yeah. <laughs> and he got that go fund me that went nuts after that. <laughs> every now and then you still you are. <laughs> every now and then that happens because you know big programs will go in and they will underestimate that team that's coming in. Absolutely, like said, they think it's just a win. And once that snowball effect happens, like it's almost you can't get up out of that rut. Yeah. Everybody's turning the ball over. Yep. You know you missing layups at the buzzer. Like what yep. the hell is going on? And and before you know it, like we got that. We got that on our resume. Like I tell people all the time, you know, people talking about the last year that we had when we uh, lost, what, four or five games or whatever. Like one of those losses was to Drake University right down the street, Des Moines, Iowa. You know, and I think we lost that game like 48-44. It's like, how? Like they, they slowed scores. the ball down? <laughs> yep. You know, they just, <laughs> I mean, pounded it down. And they won probably five games that year or four games that year. And one of them was against the team that made it to the Elite Eight with uh, an NBA lottery pick on the team. Hey, like, that's that shit. kind of stuff that, like, you, don't, <laughs> you don't think about happening, but it do. Yeah, it you're right. And, and all these things we talked about culminate for a team, their psyche, man, you, you just really, it, it will behoove you to understand the storylines in between. Because like I was saying, we started the year off, we lost to Louisville by 20. We lost to Oregon State by like, by 20 as well. And then after Christmas break, that's when the team psyche had gone down. And we lost to the University of Texas with LaMarcus Aldridge and P.J. Tucker and uh, Booby Gibson. Shout out to Booby Gibson as well. We lost by 71. And it ain't because there was no damn 71 points better than us. It's because yeah, our, team, yeah. our, our team psyche was gone. It was gone. Mm. And, I, and it, I'll say this. The, the, the strategy to beat them was, was bad, man. And, and um, my AD at the time was actually the commissioner of the SWAC, Charles McClellan. And the strategy that our coach came up with was so bad. He was like, I remember, us, and this is some behind-the-scenes shit all the way. <laughs> Charles comes in there after, because our morale was at zero at that point. Like, it, it was just like, man, we, we got to pick our faces up so we can go play in conference. He was like, you know, I did some looking around, guys. If we would have just held the ball for 35 seconds, it just got us. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we lost we would have came out better. <laughs> That's crazy. He was dead serious, man. I was just like, damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that, that was a good punch, man. That was a good punch. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, they had three pros, though. So three. ultimately, it's like, hey. Two championship three level ones at that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And but that's my reality. That's my story. And right. but people on campus would just tan us up, man. I'm just like, dog, it ain't what you think. Like we we not garbage like mm-hmm. that. It's just the morale is where the morale is at right now, man. I remember we played Alabama right. and M. We had six guys suit up. What's that? Hold on. Wow. Six guys suit up. Uh-huh. Everybody laughing us in the warm up lines. It's like, dog, y'all just don't know the, the, the psychological thing going on with this. Team. <laughs> right. It's tough. <laughs> It's tough. Like if you if you're not doing it, you don't know about it. Of course, everybody from the outside looking in, thinking everything is is all peachy and cream because you hooping and all that. But it's a lot that comes along with it, man. You know, going to school, injuries, being tired, can't miss none of that, and then you still got to go out and perform, man. It's tough. It's tough. I, I love you sharing that, man, because people don't understand. Yeah. I always say this: personality types matter. When you putting a team together, you gotta know what messages with who. Who gonna hold people accountable in that yeah. locker room? You know how it go. If your leader is yeah. soft, man, people gonna do whatever the hell they want to do because they. Everybody tell you the greatest thing is to slice bread. You, I'm sure yeah. you know when them, them checks clear them first ones. You like, oh hell yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to see what what, what them joints said, man. See what was going on. Like you, man, you got I, money, bro. I tell the yeah. story. I tell the story, and this is my rookie deal. I tell the story. I said what. <laughs> One of the things that like messed me up mentally, psychologically, is when I saw one of like I guess we're gonna call it our check stubs or whatever. But I, yeah. when I saw one check stub, I was like, I'm getting it twice a month. Ain't no way in hell. <laughs> Ain't no way. And, and then like that summer, like like my mom got pictures and stuff. This is back in the days when you take the picture, the Polaroid, and all that. My mom got pictures and stuff at the house where. Man, we had car like we had. Th- I had three or four Escalades, the same car. We had two or three Hummers. They was parked all on the grass. There was tickets <laughs> on them because in the suburbs you ain't supposed to be. Par- I mean, we was just going ape shit crazy and just thinking about something like not me and my brothers. We talked about that stuff like man, we were so dumb back then. Like we could have took that money and started trucking companies and all kinds of different stuff. But you don't think about that at the time. Thanks. You just man, just living a life. Just living life ain't no in hell. I'm getting that twice, twice a month on the first and fifteen. Blew my mind, man. Blew my mind, bro. And on a smaller scale, I'll say this: uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm wiping my tears. I'm, I'm laughing, crying because this is so like, <laughs> like this is. No, nah, I don't. I don't know that life of buying five Escalades, but I will juxtapose it this way. <laughs> my first teacher check it was like eighteen hundred dollars, and then and you know I, I was I want to come from playing ball overseas. I played, um, I coached at, at my alma mater, Prairie View. You know, that that was cool. No, no, I'm sorry. My first check was like, it was 3000 or something like that. Boy, I went straight, straight to the dealership and bought me Escalade with teacher money. That was one of the <laughs> dumbest things I did, but I was just like, Ooh, I did that every two weeks? Shit, man. <laughs> we, we going to the Bought an Escalade, bro. Like, it was a used one, but Escalade nonetheless. And uh, shout out to um, oh, a fallen want... NBA player, Dwight oh. Jones, man. Uh, he played for the Lakers and, and the um, and the Rockets back in the uh, 80s. Uh, his son actually um, almost went to the NBA. But being Big D helped me get that deal, which I did not deserve at all. <laughs> 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 so I know it's – I can only imagine on a higher scale how you was feeling getting them legit man. checks. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Just, just, act, just acting the food just for no – apparent reason at all and we, we, we still we laugh we laugh at that laugh at that to this day just like man you remember we had them cars just parked all on the grass and everything like that i was like yeah we just had them in there. and then the same cars just different colors just yeah. dumb just super just so like now that's the stuff that you know i got my boys just coming up behind me have the opportunity to be to be pros and stuff like that marcus jr he's a junior in high school so you know, he has his opportunity of coming up behind me as well to be pro. So I, I tried to teach them a lot differently than, you know, um, have a different mindset than I had. I mean, of course, 
they they're being raised in an environment and more privileged than I was. But you know, my pops, you know, was ex marine, make sure that anything we needed or or anything that we needed, not necessarily wanted, some of the things that we wanted, but the things that we needed was taken care of. And you know, pretty much the same thing with them. I make sure that everything that they need, they have. Some of the things that they want. You know they can get a lot of stuff they want they can't get you know marcus jr got a car outside and he don't have a driver's license so he's like dude until you get your driver's license you ain't get, you, ain't, you can't drive the car so i gotta pick you up from school and drive you to school every single day it's just the responsibilities that you gotta understand that you gotta be a part of and um you know it, it just helped mold me mentally um for the next step and and raising these kids that me and my wife have I love that, man, because, I mean, uh, to, to quote an old movie of, you ain't got no zigzag, you get no drig drag. And that's, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you remember that from the wood? <laughs> but, like, if you ain't got the, the means to get the job done, you, you don't have it. Right. You, you're not driving. Sorry. And, and I think that Absolutely. rather than being our children's friends, being the provisioners of our children is more important. Absolutely. I used to be a teacher, like I said. And I saw a lack of that with my athletes, you know what I mean? And I, I would always try to step in and help them in that space. Like, listen, man, I don't care. I don't, I, I coach middle school. I was like, I don't give a shit about a district championship. That means nothing to me. Right. I want right. you to say, when you come to college, like I learned something from coach Franks in seventh grade right. that I took to college. That's all I care right. about. I don't care about nothing else. Right. I want to win a little bit. You know, you go to the happy hour, you can talk a little shit, but I, that, that didn't motivate yeah. me because they don't give us a, a bonus check for winning district. That, that does nothing for me. Exactly. Nothing. Exactly. And, and that's those are that's the time that the kids are, you know, needed to be need to be molded and need to understand, you know, the things how to be better and how to win, how to present themselves presentable. Um, I'm the exact same way. Like I, I coach at uh, Murphy Junior's high school. My oldest son on Monday, when he was in high school, I coached at his high school. Of course, uh, everything is volunteer or whatever. But, you know, just to be a part as the coaching staff, you know, to help give them some things that, um, you know, I learned and stuff like that. And when I'm a coach, I'm a coach. Just because my son is on this team, that don't make none of that, you know. You know, I, I, you know, I played, I was a big, small four, power forward or whatever. So I coached the bigs in high school here. Um, he's a guard, uh, two, three, four, whatever. So a lot of times he's down there with the guards. He's not six eighty, six five. So I mean, he could get grow, he could get hot, uh, taller, whatever. But at this point now, you know, he's doing more of the guard stuff. And I remember one practice, one of the, his teammates, you know, called down. Was like, you know, Coach Pfizer, and I, and I looked. He's like, you know, uh, Junior's on the wall, and he was just sitting down. And I was like, what, what you want me to do? <laughs> he was like, well, something's wrong with his leg. And I said. Or if it ain't broke or no ambulance coming on, he better get up. I'm down here working. And I literally let him sit on the ground on the wall because, I mean, what you want me to do? I, I don't coach as, you know, I'm dad. Like, if it was something more severe or whatever and everything was done with it and the practice was over, okay, then I get back into that mode. But while I'm coaching, I coach him just like I coach anybody else. You're doing good, you're doing good. If you're messing up, you're messing up. I'm going to yell at you as much as I, I, I yell at your teammates. I, I, that's I love what coach that. is supposed to do. I love that. I swear, I don't have any kids, but I'm going to be that kind of coach. And and I'll attribute this. Gotcha. My dad was like, man, my dad was, was my coach for up until middle school, man. And now my dad didn't give me preferential treatment. I ain't going to front. But hmm. he would yank me if I'm tripping. And I guess you coop that with my mom the way she did me in school. It's like, if any teacher said something, she said, I'm going to believe them because she was a teacher. So I, I never had like an out to just kind of like, you know how it goes with some, some kids, right. if you give them the way to manipulate a program, they will. Absolutely. And I think that's important, Absolutely. man, because it, it leads you to better outcomes and later in life. And I told them all the time, all, probably one of y'all in here will probably play Division One college ball. I had a very talented bunch. Kids dunking in seventh grade. I had a very talented bunch. I like, reality is one of y'all to go D1. So mm -hmm. I, I want to make you win at life with learning what discipline that ball brings to you, not just thinking that right. this is going to be your meal ticket to take you to right. the NBA because the numbers say it's not going to happen. That's what the just that's what the numbers and, say. And, and it's a lot harder than than what they think and what they believe. Um, I give a story all the time with teaching and coaching and stuff like that. I said, man, listen, I was a McGowan Law American coming out of high school, and when I got to college, I thought everybody on the team was going to the NBA. Yeah. I swear everybody was going to the NBA. I was 
six eight one ninety eight one ninety nine when I first got to college, skinny as ever. Before my first collegiate game, I was two fifty. Damn, and I had to get in the weight room. Had to, I had to get in the weight room because they was pushing me around like uh, Stevie Johnson. He was, um, you know, a year older than me, and you know Stevie, you know six four six five, about two thirty five. When I when I got to college, about two twenty five, two thirty, strong. He was slinging me around. I said, "Nah, this can't happen." This can't happen. <laughs> I, I mean, like I said, I thought everybody was going to the NBA. Then then once I started getting stronger, you know, then then the talent and everything, things started to you know, okay, I'm figuring that out. Now you see, I got my strength and I can do what I can, you know, what I came here to do. Now you can see the difference in you know the talent level and stuff like that. But they don't understand, you know. They're getting all these accolades or all these offers is being slung everywhere and all that. Man, you get up to them schools and thinking these coaches are gonna take take it easy on you. Absolutely that ain't gonna happen. Not. That ain't gonna happen. Man, I, I you know, love that. College coaches, college coaches get kids to transfer, pro coaches. I, what how it goes, college coaches get kids transfer to go somewhere else. And the pros, the players get the coaches fired. And that's just the way it goes. And, and when you get to college and you think you're going to take that coach's livelihood, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. It, it ain't going to happen. And um, and Chris and G, I got you with the Super Chat, man. Super Chats get priority, but I wanted to flow. So I got you on your question after, after I say this. I got you. Uh, and shout out there, man. Hit the Super Chat. Hit the uh, Cash App. Hit the Like button. All these things that help build the channel forward. And I love your comment because you coming from being a, a McDonald's All-American. You coming in at 66190. That's pretty much my story. I came in 6'6, 175 or something like that. I'm talking about lifting with the point guards. I was so weak. And I, <laughs> and I got my welcome to D1. I never forget cat name Steven Ozier dunked on me so bad. Like he, I, I, cause I had hops, I told you. I caught his arm and he still dunked me. I was like, you didn't see that in high school. You didn't get to the high school, dog. <laughs> I was like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Like, absolutely how do i go back against that like right right <laughs> right so that I was, was a very way. I, I remember i remember my uh i think my freshman year i ran into lee Naylor. lee Naylor. tcu yeah man this tcu where like we had to play them in uh puerto rico we was in the puerto rican shootout and the game before like we was down there on the island whatever and they you know tcu was playing yeah, I had like 36. And I'm like, man, who in the heck is this? Then the next game, he had like 39. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Now we got to run into them? See, people don't understand that type of I, – I don't care what you think on the next level and all that. Everybody's not going to be uh, NBA superstar or whatever. Thanks. But you think everybody in the NBA can't play, you're sadly mistaken. And then the, the level before that, I mean, Kurt Thomas led the NCAA in rebounding and points. You know, his last year at TCU. You think he ain't had no game, but when he got to the NBA, you had a lot of shooters, a lot of other superstars. He did what he had to do to get his paycheck. The specialist, yep. You know, that's admirable. Thanks. Absolutely. And I got to give a guy like Kwame Brown respect in this regard because, like, listen, man, I don't care where you oh, drafted at. Man, Kwame could play. Huh? Kwame could play. Man, he could, Kwame I, could I say play. this all the time. Like, when he was with the Golden State Warriors with the Sixers, I'm like, dog, this mm -hmm. dude is a good, serviceable mm -hmm. big man. Like, y'all just going off this. All of everything mentality, and I, I'm gonna talk about this too with, with Lonzo Ball. I'm like, dog, everybody got the hype before you get there, but once you're there, mm -hmm. the, the pecking order shakes out. Whether you a locker room right. leader, whether you just a dog like right. that, that's when it starts right. itself out on the on the actual court, not the the, the contracts and shit like that. Um, and, and so when I see guys get so overzealous when and critiquing the Kwame Brown, critiquing uh, guys on that level, I'm just like, listen, man. The fact he kept getting contracts, that dude can play. I'm sorry, he can play. And I yeah. and I watched him because I, I made a post in Hoop Jargon like towards the end of his career. I was like, Kwame Brown ain't bad. Like I don't understand like the ref he get. He is right. a, he got the mid range down. He got the body. He he, he mm -hmm. got his intellect. He's always been a smart guy. But maybe that's that yeah. high school yeah. shit you got to break. You know what I'm saying? And right. man, I was like, that, that's right. now Kwame's a good big. And it's funny everybody was yeah. laughing at the post at the time. I was like, and then it's funny like you know when he sit back and evaluate his career he, he, he was very he, he always says if you give him more minutes he'll be productive that's you know who, who knows if that's to be true all the way but i do know is when he's on the court he was relatively productive man 
I do yeah, know that. Absolutely. Uh, and we, we train we trained together. We had the same training with Tim Grover for our first six, seven years as pros. Um uh, was Kwame a real good guy. Uh never backed down for nobody. You know, never yeah. did, never would. And uh, as you can see now, with everything <laughs> that he do on social media, it's super funny. Um, you know, he's a country boy from uh down there in Georgia and yeah, Kwame's always been a good dude. I think Kwame Brown, man, that's my spirit animal, boy. Shut your ass up, boy. <laughs> I mean, Kwame, boy, he's hilarious, man. I, I, I'm here for it because it's like it's it's only so long you, you can kick somebody before it's like, oh, you done gave me a voice. Oh, it's over now. I got nobody to answer to. Yeah, I'm gonna do it my way. So you you gonna take it? <laughs> you gonna like it? So I gotta give him. So so let, let's let's switch gears a little bit, man. I know um, you tell me when when your time is. When I want to respect time of, of everybody okay. on the show. All right, so Chris and G has filed out Super Chat. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, about the current situation with the Bulls and the possible tampering. Also, the current team is constructed. How far can they go? Talk to them. Um, uh, what, what, I, don't, I don't necessarily know um, with the, the current situation with the tampering. Okay. If you can give me some more information on that. Um, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm a father now, so we be everywhere taking kids to school and class and all that different stuff, so I don't get to – Watch it as much as possible. Also, as the current team is constructed, how far they can go. Um, these guys can go. Uh, they can really play. The, the Eastern Conference has, has shifted. You know, people want to call it the LeBron LeBron effect. You know, when he's in the East, the, the West is strong. <laughs> now he's in the West and now the East is strong. But uh, uh, it, it's, it's still it's teams that are rebuilding. Uh, Milwaukee. Is having a little struggle right now, which is a surprise, but um, it's, it's early. I yeah. mean, you you can never, you can never, you know, jump off the bridge too early, thinking everything is all peaches and cream. But uh, you know, these guys are hungry. They 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 found a situation where they're they're productive, and the organization is is letting them do what they can do. And I mean, they're having fun. And I'm surprised about them being as as good as they are. And um, you know, it, it can only get better from here, I think. I, I, I think they're going to remain at, at the top of the standings uh, going into the playoffs. <clears throat> I, I actually do um, mirror that sentiment because when you watch the Bulls play, they just have such an organic uh, feel to that team. And I knew as soon as yeah. – um, and, and give some backstory. I got a chance to hang out with LeVar Ball at his, uh, at his mansion out in Chino. And uh, Zoe pulled up on us. And it was the weekend right before he signed with the Bulls. Uh, this was July 31st. July 31st, I believe the day was when I was out there. And um, and his disposition just led me to like, you know, he, he's at a, at a space where he is comfortable who he is and watch him sign with the Bulls. That's the team I, in, in, in this space, a lot of people speculate a whole bunch of shit and everybody want to go to Charlotte. I think LeVar and his heart of hearts want him to go to Charlotte. I want to go to the Bulls because the Bulls made the most sense to me. It's a story they franchise. Want him to go, to, go ahead. They wanted him to go to Charlotte now with his brother? Yeah. LeVar no, wants all three to play together. together. He, he wants all three to play no, together. No, he, no, he, he's, he's not no, to be talked off. No, this ain't either. high school no more. It's not high school no more. It, no, it, it's Because <laughs> at the time, at that time, like, you got to understand, and for the ones who think Jello can't play, don't know basketball. Jello can hoop, yes. You know, don't, don't know basketball. But at that time, like, the, the level of the boys in age or whatever, you know, one was better than the next one than the next one. Now they're all pros. And so now we're at the level of, of adults. They're in their manly bodies and stuff like that. Um, one, both of them are two point guards. Both of them are point guards. So um, them and maybe Jello together, one or the other with Jello, but them two, them two point guards together, that, that's not a good idea. Well, I'll tell you this, and here's how LeVar explained it. Um, he was saying from a standpoint, like I say, personalities do matter. Personality types do matter. And he was saying that Zoe is going to be the one going to be the balance. He's going to be the guy to take care of everybody. Lamelo is the wild card. He's going to do whatever his big brother tells him to do. And Jello is going to run. He's going to shoot this, the fire out the ball. He's going to be a, extremely unselfish. This is before Jello went and lifted up for the summer league. LeVar said this. And I, I got to give him credit because he sees – I mean, well, let me put it this way. LeVar Ball knows what he raised. And I – from what he – you know, share with me and uh, shot the ball facts, man. Uh, huge YouTuber on here. What he shared with us the way he he 
he trained up his kids is what you would see like in the old world, like of how Masons did their kids. Like you learn the craft every day. You're going to learn how precision every day. And he made them work harder than most people are willing to do. And I think that's why he's so confident in what he raised because he, he is not to be talked off at, at all. Like it, all three boys will play together at one point. And he references because again, the personality types that they have. So I, I am more to what you're saying as far as just me stepping back, not knowing a lot. But after talking to LaVar, he really believes that. And I and I got to admit, what? who are us to tell him he lying? Because goddamn, he ain't been 100%, but he been about a, a good percentage correct about what he raised, man. I I, I get I, <laughs> I get that. I understand that. Um, as a father, you would want your, you know, your three sons to play together or you would want your sons to play together and all of that. But, you know, we're dealing with the NBA now, and, and, and the NBA is actually like, okay, we get the Kumaya and everything like that, but we're trying to win ball games. <laughs> and, nah, and, I'm with it. I understand. You know, the, the, <laughs> the two, like, I mean, they're, they're both – those two, two are, are both point guards. Like, Melo's game is – if you put Melo at the two, you know, it, it, it's going to be a different of a, of a flat. Or even if you put Zoe at the two. It's going to be a different of a flash, like flash. I, I, I think they need to – those two point guards need to be on different clubs, and, which they're both having success where they are, and Jello needs to be with one or the other, or, you know, fingers crossed that he get with someone, you know, with, with a a solid contract, you know, to actually, Thanks. you know, be able to play. But um, I, 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 as a father, I get it. As the NBA exec, they're like, nah, that ain't about to happen right now. They're too young for that. I'm too young for well, that. Yeah, and I, and I, I tend to agree with the overall you know, sentiment. Shout out to uh, Flight Sports TV, man, another YouTuber who covers the ball for him. He does his damn thing out these streets. But, yeah, no, I mean, my, my whole thing is being a YouTuber, playing at a high level, man, I, I always got to – I serve two masters, man. So I understand, you know, from your standpoint, because that's how I default. I default to that. Like, show me, then I'll believe it. Until I see it, mm -hmm. I, it's, it's a whole bunch of shit you can take in. What do you actually subscribe right. to is how your perspective is given. And I, But again, for me, hanging with him and understanding how his mind works and understanding what he raised him to be, I don't think it is as much as a far-fetched thing as I used to. Let me put it that way. And so I, I, I give him a lot of credit, man, because he, he's willed his boys to be where they are right now. And if he wasn't how he is, they probably wouldn't be who they are. So I, I, I'll leave that at that. I I, I'm not in no position to tell yeah. no man how to raise their kids, as long as you raise them upstandingly, he's doing true. the right way. In my point, in my, in my opinion, he's doing it the right way. All right, so Unc Vern says, uh, yeah, I remember Unc Vern, you was one who was saying, send him to Charlotte, but um, Michael Jordan was three dollars, three million short of getting Lonzo Ball. Maybe so. I put that short out with the ball saying, I put some money up, you know, if y'all look at my channel, Oh, uh, I was out there at the mansion. Uh, so maybe uh, <laughs> that, that was the case. I'm not sure. But yeah, you got something from your other father? Um, I mean, once you get on that level, that, you know, money is money or whatever. Three million is three million. But that three million could have been made up somewhere else. I, I, I really think, I really think Zoe liked the idea of, of him playing with his, his younger brother. But at the same time, he's like, you know, at the same time, he probably don't want to stifle what his younger brother can can ultimately become, and so he's like, okay, well, I'm just going to let him be where he's at. The 84 million was definitely a blessing. I mean, you, I'm not going to turn down 84 for 87. That's the same money, my guy. That's, that's the same, same money. money. Um, <laughs> as, as a taxi, that's the same money. Yeah, so, half um, of it's gone. <laughs> I, I just, yeah. <laughs> 48 percent is already gone yeah, <laughs> yeah you split like, hands at that like you don't see that, you don't see that money that that's why you don't see that's why you don't see like pros and stuff like that in in jail for tax evasion and stuff like that because you don't see if they gave if they gave us us that money man please there'd be so many guys in jail you don't see that money it, off the top is what you get like down to the pit they're gonna make sure it's right and make sure that you're good and, and go about your business but I, I think, I think, he, uh, I think Chicago was the best place for him, and um, as you can see, the record is is, is definitely stating that he they're gelling well. Yeah. 
they they, they gelling well, man. And I, I knew it just I mean, that, that UCLA backcourt that they got with him and uh Levine with the complimentary games. I know they weren't there at the same time, but yeah. They got that similar era of, of basketball, and they got like just that, that build where like that six seven six six, athletic, you know, uh, high IQ, that that can work yep. today. That can work. Six two, Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> athletic, overly overzealous. <clears throat> Russ Westbrook, uh, that necessarily ain't the, the, the way to go these days. <laughs> um, no, no, the, the times are the times are definitely. Are turning. Um, I I still I'm I'm still one of the ones who because I'm a I'm a I'm a big uh, Westbrook fan. Uh, have been for a long time. I think he's pushing the envelope a little bit too much right now, which has really um, got him a little bit off course. Because when he on, he on. Um, when he's running the, the the club the way he has run it ran it in the past, UCLA as well. He's on, he's on, but um, it, it, it's, it's crazy times out there in LA right now. Um, but but you're right. I mean, coaches love the the long, tall wingspan guards that can see over the top. Mm-hmm. Um, a big guard is something that's that's definitely fun to have. But I mean, you can you can have a six one six six foot six one Chris Paul that you know know how to run the ball club as well. So that's facts. It's just all the that's facts. That's facts. Yeah. But let's lead to what we started with, with a point guard who knows hitching your scoring pockets and one that kind of waits and they pass out of duress. And it does affect your game. Right. It makes you cut a little less hard. It makes you want to play defense a little less hard when you know there's no reward on the other side mm-hmm. of the ball. I don't care what right. nobody say. Those things are in your mind during a given yeah. basketball game. That's just facts. Especially if you're a swing player where you are dependent in some capacity right. or the most capacity of somebody else's touching the ball first. So I, I, that's just what a thing. And uh, good question from the panel, man. Go says, salute who? Ask the brother Marcus, man, who's the most underrated NBA player you played against? Talk to us, Mark. The most underrated I played against. Oh. Or the best. Man. You can go whatever one you want to go. Or the, or the best player that I've ever played against? Or Yeah. Either one. Uh, you want to I've, I've always said the hardest. <laughs> The hardest guy for me to play against and, and to guard was uh, Melo. And, you know, <laughs> Melo's the same height, but had all of that, you know, yeah. and just, you know, my early on in my, my career, um, you know, I wasn't starting anything like that. They had whoever starting Tyson or when Charles Oakley and them came over. So I used to look at Bill Carter like, okay, we five minutes in and, he got 17 up there on the board. Now you want to call me? So you, <laughs> you want to call me when he when he piping hot? <laughs> That's when you want to call me. Um, so it, it, Melo was always the, the the toughest, you know, cover for me because he he would do it everywhere on the floor, anywhere on the floor. I mean, it's kind of hard to say underrated because I mean you play against so many players, and um, at any given moment, you know. For lack of better words, yeah, bust your ass. I yeah. I remember being to Golden State and and absolutely not being able to stop a Donald Ford. A and, Donald and he went, freaking he, Ford. <laughs> he wasn't doing nothing phenomenal. I mean, just like how is this half jump runner hook thing going in? <laughs> yeah. But you know, he's a pro that had been there, and it's like you look up on the board and he got seventeen and fourteen. While well, I'm yeah. been trying to figure out how did I get three fouls? Yeah, it's like it, it's so much to to even, you know, compute and put in. And, um, yeah, it, it's, just, it's just too many. I think there's too many underrated players, but definitely Melo was my, my toughest cover. And I say this on this channel all the time, man. Me and Melo are the exact same age. We came out of high school in 2002. Mm-hmm. My senior year, we played the same tournament, which was in, in Houston. Uh, it was the Nike National Tournament. It was the first of its kind. Kendrick Perkins was in it. Melo, uh, Hassan Adams. Ooh. Cartier Martin and uh, Indy Eby. So we had like five, six NBA players in that tournament, uh, 2002. It was in 01. It was right before. It was December of 2001. And I remember watching Carmelo Anthony. You know, again, we both seniors. I'm just like, I can't. If, if I was to play him, I can't do nothing with him. <laughs> Carmelo played the exact way he played right now when he was 16, 17, 18 yes. years old. Yes. Uh, yes. Unreal. Unreal of a cover. Yeah, how do you yeah. guard? That? And, and once he once he gets hot, I don't care who it is. 
because you, you're not going to block his shot. You're you know, not he gonna say he, he, he's going to shoot over the top of you. And once that tunnel vision is what it is, like I mean, my wife was watching the games the other day, Lakers game, and and Rondo, Rondo basically rolling the ball to him. He looking for him. And that, it's like that, that thing go through the net so fast, like the nets don't even move. And when he hot like that, man, he a tough cover. He, he's not he's not doing it in the block like he used to anymore off the dribble. But if he wanted to, he'd definitely he'd definitely pull it out on you and, and get the ice later. Hello. All right, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I got a phone call that got in the way. Fire, right, cool. you still up, bro? Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm still here. Uh oh. You hear me? Yes, sorry uh-huh. about that, man. I had a I had a phone call knock me out. Can you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry about that, man. The uh, the you hear me? I, I, I hear you. The uh, your your mic is like distorted now. Is it plugged all the way in? Let's see. What about now? No, you, like you 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 sound like one of the Alvin and the Chipmunks <laughs> on God. <laughs> <laughs> What about now? Same thing. Same thing? Yeah, it, it may not be the mic. Okay, I think they said they can hear me. But what about now? Same thing. Really? Yep, it literally sounds I like mean, a chipmunk. I, uh, I, bet, I bet everybody laughing their ass off. Holy shit, they are. <laughs> Chris is saying it's your show now, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> hope that ain't mine. So is it... So y- y'all, let me know how y'all how it's coming after y'all. Can you, can you hear me? Like, is it sound like the chipmunks? It, it still sound the same way. It's damn stream yard, man. All right, so go ahead, keep rocking. I'm a, I'm gonna drop out and, and come back and see if that lets me switch anything. All right, what about now? Still the same thing. Bruh. Yeah, that's crazy. Holy cow. Check the fluid in your earbuds. Hey, man, that is crazy. <laughs> and my daughter, and my six-year-old was in there, she be laughing her ass off. <laughs> Boy, my friends ain't nothing, man. They ain't nothing. They ain't going to never be nothing. <laughs> See, look. <laughs> that's crazy. Dang. Well, I hate that's going on, but. I tell you what, man. So since my audio is jacked up, um, when you get time, let, let's do a part two to this, man. Uh, I'm I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'm absolutely cool with that. Okay, I think they hear me clear on my end, but I want to make sure you're comfortable with this as well, because I think it's a lot to unpack from your career, man, and your perspective. And I just I love guys who understand that level because you speak on it from experience. Let me, let me see. Okay. Turn my blue too far. Hello. Yeah, I, I you still on fire. Right, it's still the same thing, man. Bruh, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hang up, unfortunately. Yeah. Fine. Hello? Yeah, you still good. Hello? I hear you fine on my end. Nah, it's still the same thing. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. So, my so air, my air power has died, so I'm just, it's just off of my, my speaker now, but that's crazy. Dang. Well, that's all right, man. We're we going to do a part two on this, man, because uh, obviously the people like it. The, the number's been up the whole way. Um, so your perspective is something I think is paramount going forward, man. And so in the next uh, two, three weeks or whatever your, your schedule permits, uh, I'd love to have you back on, man, so we can talk some more shop out here, man. 
That's that's cool. I mean, um, I, whatever you want to do, it, I'm fine. I, I'm taking Marcus Jr. to uh, the UNLV game tomorrow. They're playing Cal, so that's tomorrow, like at about five. But you know, you got my cell phone. Hit me up anytime. Um, Done deal. Who, who they play? I mean, where they play at? They play at uh, at UNLV. They playing at UNLV, yeah. Man, so one of my middle school kids, I had Royce Ham. He he, he transferred from UT. He plays at uh, UNLV. I'm, I'm gonna try to get to one of them, man. Because he transferred, he graduated early, so this is last year. He playing at UNLV. I told him I'm gonna pull up on him on the game. So what's his name? Royce Ham. Okay. Good okay, kid, man. Yeah. Very good kid from Houston. He's the only kid on there from Houston. So um, yeah, man. Check him out when you there, man. Royce Ham. He, he's really happy go lucky kid. Good kid, man. He's doing his thing, man. Man, this is crazy, man. Like, that is weird how that just happened. Hey, answer this one question before you go, man. I know Vern was asking, man. Tell a little bit about where you from and what got you from high school to Iowa State, man. Say again? Um, so one of my subscribers, Vern, he was asking a little bit about your background. So talk a little bit. I know you say you're from Louisiana, man. Where'd you play at? And, you know, how'd you get to Iowa State? Oh, uh, high school basketball I played um, – at Arcadia, Louisiana. I, I graduated from Arcadia, Louisiana. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Um, but, you know, I wanted to get away from that life just to survive. You Smart know, man. So my older brother was living down in Louisiana, moved to Louisiana, um, you know, finished my high school career there. Um, you know, played at a small school. Arcadia High School ultimately became a McDowell All-American. Uh, went to Iowa State. And, uh, you know, pretty much the rest is history. Um, so definitely thankful for my uh, grassroots background and everything. Small school, small town. Love my city, love my town. And, uh, yeah, that's what I'm, uh, where I'm ultimately from. There you go. Boom. So for all y'all, I didn't know you from Louisiana. I, I, well, yeah. Kind of, but you said from Detroit. So, okay. I always took you as like a, a Midwest kind of guy. So, okay. All right. It's good to get the backstories. You know what I'm saying? So you know who somebody really is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's it? Well, uh, man, hey, great part one. We're we going to do this again because this has been – kind of you said 30 minutes. We, we almost went an hour, but you know, when it's organic, you know how it rolls. No, it's cool. It's, yeah, it's cool. It's just – I just had, had some things that I was – I mean, I was, I'm still going to be able to do. But, you know, time goes where it goes. I don't I don't never like to, you know, cheat, cheat the moment of whatever it is because, you know, you don't never know what we're doing in life and the opportunities that we have. So, like I said, I'm a regular person. You know, we can do this two or three hours. I, I don't mind it without this audio problem. That I'm having. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It, it's crazy as ever. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Marcus, man. And so, um, uh, to next time, y'all, man, y'all sub to the channel, man. If y'all want these dope interviews from, from guys who walk that walk, who's done it at the highest level, man, support the channel, man. Because, Marcus, no, I've been I've been hounding him for about two, three months to get this down, man. And so, you just got to be persistent. So, I, I appreciate you so much, man. Take your time out your day to, to kick it over here, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to hear you, but it's just, it's just going okay. out a little bit. No, don't worry about it, man. You good, man. So, <laughs> all right, so, all right man. Like, subscribe, appreciate comment. It. We catch y'all All right, y'all be easy now. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. All right. Yes. Shout out to Hoop Shark, man. I'm going to add you to the to the crew, man. This crew called Hoop Shark. They've been, they been getting at it, man. They go, they the ones that's going to grill you, man, because they the majority are all Houston people. So that's that. Shout out to Hoop Dog. Shout out to Hoop Dog.